Well, thank you very much. Um, yes, well, my name is Mario Pena, as you all know, and I've been involved in copyright issues for a few years. Uh, right after 2003, I started to use Creative Commons licenses for my works, for whatever I do. And ever since then, I've been involved in copyright things for one reason or the other. I'm going to explain a little bit about what is the relationship and my dream and my vision of how open contents can be used in education. When I'm talking about free works, I'm talking about uh, basically open works. But first I want to define something that uh, sometimes is not very clear. It's what is copyleft? When we use copyleft, we think that copyleft somehow is the contrary to copyright. And that's not the case. Instead, it's a hack of the copyright system. The copyright system and the authorship laws uh, is a set of rules or a, law, a set of laws that we have that grant exclusive, per, uh, exclusive rights to the creator of a work. And if you are not the author of the work, you have to request for permission to use that in, in, in your life. Um, so by hacking the system, we, we create, a Creative Commons create, not me, Creative Commons create and other licenses a system in which some, some rights are already uh, granted to the user, so they don't have to request for a specific permission. I don't really want to bore you with what copyleft exactly is, with the formal discussion, and I may say something that is not precisely accurate, but a copyleft content is that, that content that you can use, you can sell, you can distribute, you can modify as long as whatever you made out of that content is also shared with a similar license. So these kind of licenses like GPL for software specifically, Creative Commons by Sharealike and free documentation license are those licenses that grant uh, that the work that is made out of those works will keep the same freedoms. You, you still will be able to sell them, to distribute, to use them, to modify. So over and over again from one work you create others and others that have the same license. Those are called also viral, viral licenses. So not all, of, not all of the open contents are such, such thing. Not all of them are copyleft. Not all of, the, all of them are viral licenses because they have either more or less restrictions than the copyleft license. But when we talk about copyleft, we usually use the word for, to, to explain everything on copyright, on, sorry, on, on open contents. So in this presentation, I might say copyleft when I mean open contents, but in general, I want to, to talk about open contents in general. Those who already grant you all some, per, some kind of permission. But we keep in mind that these kind of licenses they are measured by the same rule, the rule of copyright. The only difference is that you have to be a little bit less afraid of using it because you already have some permissions. Not that you don't have to have fear, that you don't have to be careful with some things that you do. It's only that you don't have to, to, to be as worried because you already have some permissions. Um, what is the relationship between young people uh, contents and future, and I put in parentheses the open uh, theory because young people don't really care that much about open or not open. First I talked about fear, but why did I talk about fear? Well, what, is, what are the words that are related to copyright when you come to think about copyright? I'm not going to make you the question, but you already are thinking about what are the words that you come to, that come to your mind when thinking about copyright. I made this little experiment. I have in my Google account an alert to get news about uh, things that, the news related to copyright. So I started to make a kind of informal survey of seeing which were the words that appear next to the copyright term in those news. And this is funny. Here are some examples of words that you could find close to those news. Lawsuit, three strikes, Infringement, illegal is this one of the <laughs> most used ones. Disconnect users, of course. Attorney, uh, sorry for if there are lawyers here, but this is one of the words that appear. Says domains, copyright trolls. 
And when you click in the news, you go to this dreadful announcement and images that really scare you. Like, you are using copyright wrong, and we're going after you. We're going to get after you. I am not saying, please don't get me wrong, I am not saying that sometimes there are, are illegal behaviors, but sometimes there are just too many fears that there shouldn't be there. So, is the problem of copyright being equal fear the real issue here? I don't think that that's not the, the main issue. The main issue instead is the contrast between two visions that we have right now. One of the visions is the one that you have here. I believe most of you and me, myself, we are born in the past century, not in this one. And these things look really familiar to us. At least myself, when I was a kid, I had only uh, one a black and white TV with two channels. We, you, had, you had to go and switch with your hand, you know? Nothing like a remote control, nothing like that. To read books, you only had paper books. There are some paper books still now. To listen to music, there were vinyl uh, discs. And only later, there appeared cassettes. Maybe I look too old now. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's the way it worked. You were able to tape some music from the radio. So we had a sense of scarcity, of scarcity of getting those contents. But the real scarcity for us was different. It was, how am I able to be on TV? How can I write a book that somebody else would, would, would read? How can I make music, make something, make people to, to listen to it? And why nobody copies the music I'm playing? So the scarcity is not only on the contents that you get, but the way I can create those contents and show them and give them to society, sell them, whatever. But what's up to, with today, kids? With the kids that are born in late, the late 20th century or in this century? Well, it's totally different. This is my son. They are born digital. They are born with a keyboard in front of their hands. And this is picture is old. Now he's six years old. He doesn't use a keyboard anymore. He uses the iPad. And he uses the iPad in such a way that I cannot believe he's doing it. So they don't think about scarcity. They have a lot of tools to create contents, to share contents. They're not happy if they're not able to share those contents in any of the many thousands of projects that you can find in the internet. They are not happy if they don't do it, and they often do it for free, free of charge. Okay, not everything that goes to the internet has a real value. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't pay for this. I think it's funny, okay. But then you find funny things, interesting things, that since you have your camera and your, your phone, so your smartphone, you take this picture that is useful for me to make this example. But then you find very cool contents, creative contents. You find value, and these contents are free to use. They are all credited. But not only with the contents created open that you can use, you can do many things. There are contents that they are not free, and people are using them to create new contents. Since I didn't want to ask for permission, I didn't put the example. I don't, I'm not using a full copyright content here, although I wished I could, but I can't. Well, maybe in the United States I can, because it's fair use, but not here. So I didn't use it. Instead, I'm using one that is made out of open contents. This picture is taken with a model, actually she was a, a bartender, uh, having in her hand another picture that another artist took before. So this is a kind of a collage, using different contents to create something new, to create a new message. So the scarcity here is not about the copy fact of the contents. Instead, it's how do we create new quality stuff that we can use. And what's up with education? What is the relationship between what I'm talking about and education? There must be some kind of relationship, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Education is also about information. It's about contents that needs to be shared, that needs to be reused, and needs also to be modified. 
But many times, in, when we're in the schoolroom, when we're in the universities, and I am a dropout also from the university, so, um, we don't have any clue of what we are doing with the copyrights. We don't, have, we don't know anything about the copyrights because for schools there are some exceptions. You can use uh, full copyright contents because there, an ex uh, there is an exemption to use them in, in school. So people don't, don't ask questions of what can I do or what can I not do. This is very dangerous because there will be, there still is being a friction between the two ways of scarcity, the two visions of scarcity. But at the same time, if we knew about copyright and what happens with it, we would have to, a chance to, in first person, with our own content, experience the success of using them in life, in school. So for the road of success, I wanted a slide like this one. Instead of making it, I found it in the internet with also a Creative Commons license. Education is kind of you know, formal education, theory, and experience. How can you experience in a better way than using your own contents, whatever you create yourself, or other people's contents that are, is, are openly shared? We want, at least my dream is to have a better education and a better copy to, uh, copyright. To learn from the past, and this is something obvious, we have things like public domain, to learn from the present, we have a lot of full copyright contents like this, but they're dangerous. You have to be very careful with what you're doing. You can get cut if you're not careful with the contents you are dealing with. But those are the bricks that will bring the future. But who will make the future? Well, it has been said before by, by Richard and, and, and Miguel, it's not going any longer to be something that goes upside down. It's something that will go bottom up. Everybody becomes a learner, everybody becomes a teacher in the process. But kids, the kids will teach us the future because they will do the future. Contents that are made inside the schoolroom, they are not going to stay in the schoolroom. They will go upside. They will go, they will be uploaded, they will be downloaded. So the barriers of the schoolroom are broken. And right now they are broken. They're being used everywhere. Education comes from very different sources, not only the, the, the schoolroom. So we cannot rely on full copyright to do this because full copyright is a little bit of a trap. These are the protection terms of copyright that are being evolved during the years. And nothing seems to, to change this tendency. So the, the, t the time that you have to request for permission to do anything with the contents is being uh, broadened and broadened everywhere and it's going to ad infinitum. So whatever is created with full copyright in the school rooms, when they go outside, and they will go outside, they will be enclosed in this formula. This is important to mention. We are the first society to deny our contemporary creation. We cannot use whatever is being created right now with full copyright because we have to wait until 70 years plus one after the, the creator died. This is very important. And this makes th that the skills and creativity that shows an image like this is, does, some, does have some legal consequences. Not in this case. I didn't make this. This was just taken in, in Alcatraz just for the fun of it. But with open contents, we can learn a lot more. We can learn the change, the whole process of creation from creating contents with new, new ways of creating, editing them, learning how to, to, to fund them, also learn the deadlines, as, as Dale said. So these are very important skills that we need to learn to uh, really make a reflection of our time and our culture. And of course, to understand the process of sharing, which is not something very simple, as I will explain at the end of it, the process of crediting correctly the authors, and most important, to, make, to find empathy with, with creators, to understand how do creators uh, think. Full copyright contents, open copyright contents, whatever, 
we will see, we will understand them much better and we will create a copyright that will be much different. It will be related not to those nasty words that I was talking about, not the attorneys of course, but it will go to innovation, creation, sharing and wealth in the widest term of wealth. I'm not talking about money, also money, but wealth to enrich the society. Just to finish, and I have little time left, the inevitability of change. Everything, or sorry, nothing is going to be the same anymore. If something changes the world, it's technology. The world that we think it's very static, it's not. It's going to change. The, the kids are going to make the future, and the future will no longer stay for us. We as teachers, our world will disappear. And internet is a revolution inside the revolution. Internet is not something real. It's not something virtual. It is something that is part of life because it is life. Every little thing that we do, every little action, is in the internet. There is a reflection. There is an interconnection between the analog and the digital world. So as the, whatever happens in the physical world and in digital world turns in both directions, there must be a reflection of life in general in the schoolroom as it's part of life, of course. So it's all about reflections. It's all about using the right system to do the right thing. So open contents are those that will lead to, to a really bright future. This is what I believe. Those educated, those educated in the notion that knowledge can, can be openly shared will be the ones that will create the world of the future. And of course, the business model. And this, this, uh, this saying, the Chinese proverb, tell me and I will forget, show me and I will remember, involve me and I will understand, is now truer than ever. Now we can involve people to create the contents they are studying, others are studying, others are learning. So what better, better thing than use those contents that can be openly shared? Well, thank you very much. And just, just to point that I spend 30% of the presentation searching for images and I know where to look for them 20% crediting those images properly and I know what I'm doing about it. so I wonder why people really are it's dangerous it's difficult difficult for them to, to do so well that's all thank you very much <laughs>